twinkle lights and flashing across the sky. Like a swift arrow whizzing from a bow. Like a mighty cannonball, he seems to fly. You'll hear about him everywhere you go. The time will come when everyone will know the name of Taylor. Running bird teepees honored, Sandy. I read the smoke signals and hear drums. Running bear is calling his chiefs to war council. Many moons I have kept the war drums quiet. Even when Indian agent moved us from rich land to here, where corn won't grow, where we cannot hunt buffalo. Now, better to die like warrior than starve to death in teepee like old woman. But your son is returning. He has learned our law. He has spoken to the white chiefs in Washington. Wait for his counsel. Red Cloud is young. I am old. I've had many promises from white chiefs. All broken. But Red Cloud has learned new ways. The old ways bring nothing but death. We must do what must be done. My warriors will not wait long. <laughs> the ball so it can't find us. Where's Red Cloud? He's coming home. I don't know. But I know that was Cal Blake. Say, it did look like Blake, but why would he try to hold you up? I haven't any idea. You just stay quiet. Rebel's gone again, Uncle Sandy. Okay. That's a good thing you've got tough ribs, Red Cloud. That bullet might have gone through instead of this glancing off. <laughs> there for a while, I felt like another red skin biting the dust. Running Bear does not laugh. My son has been too much with the white man. My father allowed me to learn the white man's law. And the one who did this will be punished by that law. Are you sure it was Cal Blake, Red Cloud? Yes, I saw his face when I pulled the mask down. And it looked like Blake to me. What are you going to do? Follow due process of law. Swear out a complaint for assault with a deadly weapon with intent to commit murder. <laughs> It's a serious charge, Marshal. Was there any evidence to support Red Cloud? The warrant's enough, Dabney. 
But Ricky North said he also recognized Blake. How close to the assailant were you, Ricky? Well, I wasn't very close, but he was the same size as Cal Blake and looked like him. Mighty slim evidence to accuse a man of murder. My evidence isn't slim, Mr. Daffy. I saw Blake's face. Comes down to one man's word against another's. I just heard about Blake being arrested on a trumped-up charge. It's not a trumped-up charge, Edwards. Well, it couldn't have been Blake because he was working on fence for me all day yesterday. That's right. We was together all day long. He never left my sight. Sounds like you were a little hasty in making the arrest, Marshal. Now it's three men words against one Indians and a kid's guess. Doesn't an Indian's word count with you? Well, it depends. Wherever there's a crime, there's bound to be a motive. Now, what would you say Blake's motive was? Well, I don't know. You better ask Blake. Having full authority to enforce the law on this reservation, I hereby declare that the evidence is insufficient and order the marshal to release the prisoner from custody. Sure, they're both lying. You and Edwards are the ones who are lying. They're not enough, both of you. Seems to me Larson could be held for assault. Well, now there's provocation on both sides. You can find all the alibis you want to, Blake, but you're gonna pay for that shot. Just a moment, Red Cloud. That's an open threat to take personal revenge. No Indian on my reservation can get away with that. I don't mean to take personal revenge. I mean through the law. Maybe, but you're confined to the reservation anyway. I have a permit to come and go as I please. I'll have it revoked. Come on, let's go, Red Cloud. Oh, Marshal, aren't you forgetting to take off those handcuffs? No good losing your temper, Red Cloud. But it sure begins to look as though Daphne and Edwards have something cooked up between them. Well, I'm going to find out. The Commissioner of Indian Affairs is waiting for a letter from me on the whole situation out here. Well, if you're going to do any mailing, you better use my ranch for an address. Daphne might get too inquisitive. I hope you won't forget what you said about holding with the law, Red Cloud. White man's law, only good for white man. You have forgotten the ways of your people. Not one of them, and I never will. must be one with a white man's law, not with weapons. Council will decide. You must stop running bare from calling out his warriors. I'll do what I can. The most important thing, though, is to make the survey the commissioner asked me for, to prove that Dabney moved our tribe from rich country to land where we will starve. Need any help? No, thanks. As long as I can use your ranch for a mailing address. Certainly. Got nothing to worry about, Blake. No? You think that alibi fooled Sandy North, or the Marshal, or that educated Indian? What difference does it make? Dabney's the law here. He ain't the law in Washington. You and Dabney, you're both scared of Red Cloud, or you wouldn't have sent me out to bushwhack him. What can happen? I might get a tomahawk or an arrow in my back one of these days. I better hit the breeze. Hey, Blake, where can you get as good pay as you're making here? Stick around. Edwards and I will take care of Red Cloud. Better make it quick, or I won't be here. If he gets away, you know it's only a matter of time before you'll talk. He's not getting away. Neither is Red Cloud going to keep stirring up trouble in Washington.
Well, I just about got my survey finished. That's not all you got. A letter came for you this morning from Washington. The commissioner wants me to come back to Washington right away to meet the House Committee on Indian Affairs. Oh, boy, that's great. But he also says, copy of this letter sent to Mr. Dabney with instructions to make arrangements for your transportation. That's not so good. Dabney may find some way of stalling. I don't think he dare go against the commissioner's orders. Well, you never can tell. I'll ride back to the Indian Agency with you just in case. Thanks, Andy. I wish I could go. Well, now, we might be able to get along without you. But I don't think the rest of those dishes can. Okay, Uncle Sandy. Well, the commissioner's request is rather unusual. But, of course, I'll comply with it. You drop around tomorrow, and I'll have all the arrangements made for your trip. Tomorrow? I want to leave on this afternoon stage. Why, well, I can't possibly make the arrangements that soon. Well, delay isn't going to do you any good. I'm going, and you can't stop me. Sure you're going. But you're not telling me how to run my office. Dabney, I'm beginning to think you're afraid of what Red Cloud will report when he gets to Washington. I'm getting tired of your interference, North. So you were going to abide by the law and not take revenge on Blake. What happened, Edward? You tell him, Marshal. Edwards found Blake dead out in Mesquite Canyon by Sentinel Rock. I went out to get him, and he had this arrow on his back. Before I found Blake's body, I saw Red Cloud riding away from Sentinel Rock in an awful big hurry. Are you trying to accuse Red Cloud? Trying? <laughs> well, you all heard him threaten Blake. He was out there carrying arrows like he usually does. How much evidence do you want? As a lawyer, a lot more. If I didn't kill Blake, I never even saw him. That's enough of evidence to hold you on a murder charge. Arrest him, Marshal. Daphne, you do this, and you'll have an Indian uprising on your hands by night. So much the worse for them. I'm here to enforce the law, and I can get cavalry to back me up. I'm afraid you'll have to go with me, Red Cloud. Put your hands up! Running Bear was right. The white man's law is only for the white man. You're making a mistake, Red Cloud. I made my mistake when I thought an Indian would get fair treatment. I'm going back to my people. And if they go on the war path, I'm going with them. Well, you still think you can civilize an Indian, Sandy? Take him away, Marshal. I'll set the trial for 3.30 this afternoon. That won't be necessary, Marshal. Well, that's about since the case against Red Cloud. <laughs> How far can you go in sentencing him? Well, the limit. I'm the lawyer as far as the Indians are concerned. Washington will back me up, and I got to use a witness he tried to shoot the Marshal. I'm sorry, Marshal, Sandy, but it was such an obvious frame of... I don't like having my gun snitched, Red Cloud, but I gotta admit there's something mighty wrong when Dabney won't take your evidence and will take Edwards's. You see, Red Cloud, all white men are not like Dabney. Well, I didn't forget, Sandy. What made me blow up was the thought that an evil man can abuse the law and twist it. So he'll be reporting to Running Bear. My father will stop at nothing now. Marshal, there's got to be some reason why Dabney's siding with Edward, something that's paying him off. The only thing I can think of is, the minute Dabney moved the Indians off the good land, Edwards had his steers ready to move in. Well, Edwards runs a lot of cattle, maybe made a deal with Dabney and made him a partner. Sounds plausible, but you haven't got even circumstantial evidence. Red Cloud, I can't promise anything, but I'm certainly going to have a try at finding a link up. And the place to start looking is out in Mesquite Canyon. We have waited long enough, too long. Red Cloud hoped he could win back our rights under the white man's law. Now he has been arrested, and we know there is no justice for Indians. The council must meet, and the council must declare war. Blake was killed over by Sentinel Rock. 
The arrow must have come from around here somewhere. Well, it couldn't have been red cloth. Well, of course it couldn't, but I told you Dabney and Edwards are going to make it look as though it was. Let's just hope. <laughs> Boot marks and cigarette butts. Looks like somebody waited here for quite a while. Well, Red Cloud's wearing moccasins, and, and he doesn't smoke. Whoever it was came from over there, and they went back the same way. Hoof marks. When he got here, he must have mounted a horse. Will we follow the trail? Easy. Be right with you. Get in the house, there might be papers or something around. Well, it doesn't look as though there's anybody around. They've probably all gone to the agency office for the trial. You stay here with Champ. I'll take Rebel and Scout around. But I can help you look for, for things. No, if I've guessed wrong and run into trouble, I don't want you taking chances. Go ahead, Rebel. Shaft. Looks like somebody was trying to make an arrow like red clouds. Cigarette butts like we found at Sentinel Rock. Now we're sure, aren't we? We're sure of this much. Edwards will have to explain why somebody was trying to make a Cherokee arrow in his backyard. Get those hands up, North. Hold it. All right, North, you start talking first. Looks to me like you're figuring on robbing the place. You kid, get on off that Mustang. Get out! Go on, Ricky, take those things to Red Cloud. Come on, Jim! Now get up. 
Red Cloud, you're charged with one count of murder and one of violent assault on Marshal Hale. How do you plead? Not guilty on the first count. Guilty of assault on the Marshal. Mr. Edwards, can you identify this arrow? Sure. It's a Chirampi arrow. And it killed my foreman, Cal Blake. The same kind of arrow that the defendant Red Cloud was carrying? I object. That's a leading question. Objections overruled. Marshal, I'll hold you responsible for any disturbance during the course of this hearing. Now, you saw Red Cloud at the scene of the murder? Yeah. On the strength of the evidence, Red Cloud, I find you guilty of murder in the first degree and will recommend the death penalty. Running Bear, no more talk. Ranch. Somebody was making arrows like yours there. Where's Sandy? At Mr. Edwards' ranch. Larson captured him. We've got to get out there and help him, Marshal Hale. We'll do just that, Ricky. Thanks. You can follow me. It's just an attempt to manufacture evidence, Marshal. Pay no attention to it. Just a minute, Dabney. You run this Indian agency, but it's my job to decide if there's evidence of a crime, especially off the reservation. So what are you going to do about it? Like I said, go out and get Sandy North. But you've got a dangerous prisoner to watch over. Don't worry about that, Marshal. I'll come along with you. All right, let's go. Now, you, Stabney, we got two months working against us. Their evidence isn't worth a hoot. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm getting out of the territory while I can. What's the matter, Edwards? Sandy, he's got Larson. Our friend Larson here turned out to be quite a storyteller. He's got a very interesting story to tell about the deal Dabney made with Edwards and why he cheated the Indians out of their land. Get to your horses. I'll hear the rest of the story when I get back, Marshal. Where are you going? If I get to running there in time, there won't be any Indian uprising. now, Running Bear? Law good. Men bad. Rebel should be in on this.
flashing across the sky. Like a twisted arrow whizzing from a bow. Like a mighty cannonball, he seems to fly. You'll hear about him ever. 